Planning a trip to Venice, wanting to know where to stay for the best views, how you should spend your time in such a historical city. If you're wanting to explore a different side of this unique lagoon, then stick around. In this video, I'll be sharing our three day itinerary from Venice, including the hotel we stayed at, which had a balcony with a view of one of the main bridges into the city, as well as having dinner at the restaurant that invented the Bellini, gondola rides, and something unique that you can only do in Venice. So I'd highly recommend sticking around. Let's jump in. So Venice, or as the Italians say, Venezia, is one of my favorite cities in the world for several reasons. Firstly, the city was built on wooden poles that were driven into the water back when the city was first built. And I find it amazing engineering that that wood hasn't rotted. It actually hardens because it's in sand and not exposed to oxygen. I just found this so cool that this is how the city has been built. There's also such a richness of history. Over 2000 years, Venice has existed, and there's so much of its history that's well preserved in its museums. And a thousand of those years, it actually was its own sovereign state, which gives it a different unique twist from other places I've visited before. The fact that it was such a key part of commerce, even so many hundreds of years ago, it was right in the middle of the trading route between Middle East, Asia and Europe. And so countries from all over the world came to Venice uh, to find what goods were on sale. And also many people became wealthy in the city and spent that wealth on making the city beautiful. The fourth thing I love about Venice is that there's no cars. The city is a lagoon floating on water and all the cars have to park when they enter the island. And you can only really access the city via foot over the footbridges or via water over one of the boats. It's also a city that will likely see one of the biggest changes in the years to come. And so this is the fifth reason why I love Venice because what you see today will probably not be the Venice in 10 or 20 years time. Sea levels are rising and even though they've put protections in place to try and stop this from happening, it's still likely that the Venice we go and visit today is not gonna be what it's like in the future. So on day one, we arrived into Venice by taxi boat. Now, when you fly into Venice airport, you've got several options of how you can get to the main island. You can either get a taxi by road, which is 20 minutes, but once you hit the north of the island, you're gonna to have to get out and walk the rest of the way. Another option is the train, which is around 30 minutes. Again, it gets you into the north of the island and then you've got to find your way then to your hotel. Or the other option is water taxi. Now this is such a cool experience and coming downstairs in the airport to moorings of boats is something I've never seen before as a connection at an airport. It was very cool. It is the fastest way to get into Venice as they can drop you at your specific location. And usually there's gonna be either a port, potentially even stairs directly into your accommodation from the water in some cases. There are restrictions on the speed limits that boats can travel. This is due to the erosion along the side of the mainland. And it's also been greatly impacted by large cruise ships, which also now dock and bring a lot of tourists into Venice for the day. The water taxi was so cool. <laughs> the freshness of the water splashing over the side of the boat, the views as you enter the city were stunning. Seeing buildings from a view that you would not normally get if you were not on this boat. It was not cheap, it was 140 euros for the journey, but it did drop us right outside our hotel. And as we had a little bit of travel mishap when we were trying to get to Venice, we missed our flight. It meant that we were on a tight schedule to try and keep to the things we'd already booked that day so it was a cost that we were willing to spend to make sure we got into the hotel as soon as possible after landing so we then dropped our bags at the reception of the hotel and we jumped in to get breakfast that was still being served but the hotel said they would sort our bags and put them up in our room as we had to jump off we had a walking tour to do so we went on a free walking tour and I've done these before. I really love free walking tours. The premise is that you basically pay what you think the tour is worth at the end rather than paying up front. And we went through the Venice through the centuries north. What we love about these tours is hearing from a local person who lives in the area and has an experience living in that place. They give you good recommendations of what to eat, where to visit. And there is a free euro deposit that they use now to make sure that people show up and use the space. But it was 
amazing we loved it it was very historic around venice and one of the things we really enjoyed about it is they didn't take the traditional tourist routes so they don't go to st mark's square and this is because a lot of tour companies go there it's very busy and they want to tell a different story of venice which i found really interesting a couple of things I learned on this tour, there was originally wells where people would come and collect their water from, and these wells would collect rainwater. There was around 7,000 of them all over Venice. There's not many of them left now. Um, they showed us one, but a lot of them have actually been stolen, um, or the, the brickwork taken away. There are also 438 bridges in Venice, and there were previously thousands of gondolas in Venice, but now this has been reduced to around 300. The walking tour runs every day at 11 a.m. I've put a link in the description below. I would highly recommend if you're gonna be visiting Venice, check it out. So then after the walking tour, we had lunch at Anticio Gattello. And we sat outside soaking in all of the life of Campo Santa Maria Nova. And fun fact here, if any of the squares in Venice are called Campo, it means that they used to have grass. Although what you'll find is they're mostly now paved over. We had some really nice food here, and then after that, we walked back to our hotel, walking over the infamous Rilato Bridge. It is stunning stone bridge. It's got three sides that you can walk on, and in the middle, where you can walk, there's a line of shops. It very much gave Game of Thrones vibes, and the ice cream that I was starting to eat on the way up there started to melt all over me, so I was not very happy. I was just distracted by all the views of from this bridge how beautiful it is and amazed at the fact this bridge has stood since 1591 since it replaced its wooden predecessor when we got back to our hotel we actually got to properly check it out we stayed at the nh venezia santa lucia this hotel used to be known formerly as hotel bellini bellini is the cocktail that was invented in venice and more on that later in the video we chose a premium room with canal view and we chose this for a reason we wanted somewhere where we could people watch soak in the atmosphere of this beautiful city and the room was stunning it was large which was nice as space is such a premium in venice and also the decor was just so classy i felt very posh the bed was huge with very high ceilings and also when you walked in the first thing you spotted was the three huge windows um, which were actually doors onto the balcony there was a really beautiful mirror and divider behind the bed and also there was coffee making facilities and a tv the view from the balcony was just gorgeous we could watch everybody walking over the ponte delgi seracci bridge it's not the largest balcony and that's because the building has the original balcony um, it is more just for you to stand and watch rather than sit and relax. Also, there's wooden shutters on the outside, which we closed in the evening to make sure that we weren't woken up by the sun. This balcony was the favorite part of this room for me. It's why we booked this hotel. We spent about three hours that afternoon watching people cross the bridge. I was shooting this lovely time-lapse video and just soaking in the sounds and watching the boats go by. Every morning when we were here, I had a coffee, came out on the balcony and was just watching the city come to life, seeing all of the delivery boats going by with drink and food for the shops and restaurants and seeing all of the people starting to get up and move into the city. The hotel is around a two minute walk from the train station. Uh, we were watching all the people entering Venice during the morning and then leaving in the evening. We stayed for three nights and the total cost was £900, so it was not cheap, but we used a Hotels.com free night voucher that we collected to help us reduce the price on this slightly. As the sun was beginning to set, we went for a walk down to Fondamenta Cagnaggio, which is where there's lots of different places to eat, and we stopped for dinner at Trattiano alla Forantana and we had fish and enjoyed watching the sunset down the river. It was absolutely beautiful views and it was a perfect place to really have dinner over sunset. So I definitely recommend if you're in that part of the island, go there for dinner in the evening. And then finally on the way back to the hotel, we stopped off at an ice cream place and I'm a big fan of ice cream. <laughs> so we went here every night once I found my favorite place and we went to Gelanteria Artangeli. It was the best ice cream, in my opinion, six euros for two, which is not a bad price for Venice. If you're enjoying this video, then why not hit subscribe for more travel inspiration tips and advice. Travel tip. 
Pre-book your museum tickets ahead of time as you can be waiting in long queues to buy tickets and then queues to get actually into the museum itself. We took some time to think about which were the museums we wanted to visit as there's so much history in Venice. We settled on the San Marco Dulce and the San Marco Corrio which we paid 62 euros for both of us to visit and we bought them online at Viva Tickets. I've put a link in the description below. Day two. After breakfast at the hotel, we headed down to St. Mark's Square early, and this is the best time really if you want to see the square without the crowds and tour groups. The first museum we had tickets for at 9am was to Doge's Palace, or Museum of San Marco Dulce. This is the residence of the Doge, the head of state, or also known as Doge Palace. Now not that Doge, it's actually the person who is in charge of Venice. Now, it was also the HQ for the government and the court and prisons of the Republic of Venice back when it was its own republic. You enter into the courtyard and see the well-maintained fascias of, of all the buildings and you get a real sense of size of this building. It is huge. We got an audio guide because I'm always a fan about understanding the context of what I'm looking at. I don't like just wandering around and looking without understanding some of the history and the context. One of the things that really blew me away about this palace was how every single inch of the ceiling was decorated. It had some type of art or drawing. There was full on framed pictures that were glued or stuck to the ceiling. Like this place was just so full of art and design everywhere you looked, it was crazy. You navigate around various rooms in the palace and you really are spoiled for choice with Renaissance paintings. The room that really took my breath away was the Great Hall. This is where the Great Council of Venice used to meet and debate and vote on how things would change in the city. There was a 22 meter by nine meter oil painting called El Paradiso, and it's one of the largest paintings on canvas in the world. And it's just, it was a lot to take in. I think I spent about 20 minutes there just absorbing all of the different scenes in this painting. It was just beautiful. And for those of you that aren't able to get to Venice, Google Arts and Culture have actually done a virtual tour so you can access some of the paintings that are inside Doge's Palace online. I've put a link below in the description. We then continued on to the prison cells, which had been used for prisoners for over four centuries until 1922, when the building was converted into a museum. To get to the prison cells, you have to cross over the Bridge of Sighs, which is quite a famous bridge in Venice, and it attracts a lot of people wanting to take pictures of it. Now, the, the reason why it's called Bridge of Sighs is apparently when prisoners would be going down to the cells and it would be the last time they would see the city they would sigh as they looked out the window of that bridge saying goodbye to the beautiful views of the city whereas nowadays when you go and visit it and you look out the window you just see everybody crammed on the bridge opposite trying to take pictures of it <sighs> sigh so after that we then went to the san marco Correa museum and here there are many neoclassical statues as well as art collections covering the early days of Venice up until the 16th century. There were some epic maps here as well from the 1500s of Venice and it's really interesting to see how actually the city has not changed its shape too much or size since it was originally built. Looking at the islands that are there now and today it's pretty similar. There were also these super cool globes, which for the Gen Z, it's like the version of Google Maps back in the day. Um, what was really interesting looking at some of these globes was actually that they hadn't fully discovered some countries yet or even the full shape of countries. And it was interesting to see how they were mapped out all the way back from the 1500s. There was one particular map that I was fixated on, which is Fra Mauro's globe. And now this, is a map of the world from the 1450s and the locations on this map are upside down so at the top of the map is actually the south of the world and at the bottom of the map is the north and there are actually some countries completely missing from this for example america hadn't been discovered at this point it's so large that it's actually double the height of me on the wall and i think the map alone was worth just the entry price to this museum because I was studying it for about 15-20 minutes. It was so insightful. So after this we then went to St Mark's Square where we had a little wander around the square but as you can see it was very touristy at this point. So uh, we decided to head out around the corner to the garden 
Grandi di Reale. Now this is a landscape garden on the Grand Canal, literally right next to St. Mark's Square. It has some beautiful walkways, benches and a ferry terminal. I think it's actually the first for a park I've ever seen to have a ferry terminal on it. Let me know in the descriptions below if you know of any other garden that's got a ferry terminal. We sat on the benches here under the pagoda and just took in all the greenery and the smells of this beautiful garden. It was a nice little oasis away from all the craziness of everybody. We then started to wander our way back to the hotel and this is why I love Venice so much. For me, it's such a romantic city because you can just wander down these streets, get lost, find these little shops or cafes, and one minute you could be in a street with loads of people, the next minute you can be in a square on your own, and it can go from being really busy to really quiet. It's just so beautiful. Whilst we were in Venice, there was an event going on called Venice Vogolonga, and this is an annual rowing regatta. It's happened every year since 1974, and it's a non-competitive boat event that celebrates all the rowers, and it's a peaceful protest about the damage being caused by motorboats and lagoon degeneration. It was so colourful to see all the different groups who had come from all over the world to take part. However, this did mean that the main canal was closed off to all traffic during this event. So we went to have lunch at Tatanina La Colnete, and we both had bruschetta and the prawn risotto. It was really delicious. After this, we headed back to our hotel, and we took a while for, because of all the crowds that were watching the boat race, so it slowed us down a little bit. We had a gondola ride that we had booked and also dinner reservations, so we needed to get changed. Once we were ready, um, we tried to get a water taxi to come and pick us up from the hotel because we were running late, and we wanted to try and get it to take us out and around um, the island to come down the south, where we needed to leave from St. Mark Square. But because the traffic had been backed up all day because of this race, it meant there was a delay. We ended up missing our original gondola ride that we did book, which was a shared gondola ride where you would get a tour guide that would talk you through some of the sights you were seeing. So it meant that we actually had to book another gondola ride, which was just for us a private one. And I'll be honest, I did a gondola ride on for my 30th birthday when I went to Venice and that's when I first visited and I fell in love with the city. And this time it just didn't feel the same. It felt so crowded. We went down the side streets off the Grand Canal and it just felt like every two minutes we were stopping or starting. The driver was having to kind of push the boat to one side to like let other boats through. It just didn't have the same appeal. Maybe it's just me. Has anyone else who's been back to Venice and done a gondola ride? found it to be not as they had experienced in the past. We then got the B ferry from San Marco to Giudecca Paladna to explore the island there. The ferry took around 15 minutes and was five euros and we had a wander around this much quieter island observing that actually when you walk to the other edge of this island you are just looking out into the Venetian lagoon and the sea. So we had dinner reservations at Harry's Dolce Venezia. Now, we were reserved here for a couple of reasons. It's the same company that created the Bellini, a cocktail made of Prosecco and peach puree. And we were super happy that it was a non-alcoholic version for us to have. It was very tasty. We dined here as we had an offer with American Express, and so we got £150 credit off our bill. The outdoor seating was very beautiful by the river, so peaceful on the island, looking back onto the main island of Venice, where everybody was. It wasn't cheap though, and if we hadn't had this offer, we probably would have eaten somewhere on the main island. But we got the ferry back afterwards, and it was very crowded, so um, it was quite fun because we, we got to stand outside and watch as we got all the way back to her hotel for the evening and watch the sunset. Our final day in Venice, we had our breakfast downstairs and then headed up to the room and I had one last coffee on that balcony just to look out over the city and really soak in those views before I left. And then we had an experience to go to in the morning, which was a watercolour painting uh, with an artist. On the way to the artist shop, I really liked actually walking this different route around the city, seeing everybody on their way to work, seeing people buying fruit and veg from the different boats on the canal, seeing the whole city really come to life in a different way. We arrived at the artist's shop 
and I was a bit skeptical as I'm not a great painter, but I was really impressed. Um, he was really friendly and welcoming. He took us down to this spot where he'd picked for us to do our painting. He brought all the equipment with him and he got the easel set up. He taught us some of the basic principles of watercolour and helped with the outline and the dimensions. He then let us begin to add some colour and depth to the paintings. We were really lucky to be the only two people on this class, so we had his full attention and at times I felt like I needed it with my dimensions going a little bit wild. I was impressed slowly and surely the paintings were coming along. It was a really beautiful experience which made me to stop and appreciate all of the little details of the buildings which normally I would have just walked by. When we got home I brought some frames online for these in a gold style and I absolutely love our drawings. It was such a unique memory of our time in Venice which I'm so grateful Ed had suggested. We booked this for a trip advisor and the cost was £141 for both of us. I've put a link in the description below. And then it was time for us to check out our hotel. So we went back, we got our suitcases and we had our final meal in Venice, which was literally just across the road from the hotel. Um, it was at Ristorante Roma. And we chose this place because it had a beautiful decking area right next to the canal and we could just get this gorgeous view of the bridge right behind us it had some beautiful flowers on there as well and we went all in with the fish on this one it was a big uh, meal i think we actually probably over ordered a little bit but yeah it was really nice to see all the fresh fish that was cooked and they came out and dished it up for us it was super tasty again this one wasn't that cheap which we kind of knew it wasn't going to be because it was obviously on a high traffic area of people but it was definitely worth it and very tasty after that it was time to say goodbye to Venice, so then we headed off to the train station where we were then getting the train over to Pisa for my sister's wedding. Now I mentioned before that I had a bit of a travel mishap, so I'll tell you guys what it was because I've learned a lesson and I also hope that no one else makes the same mistake. We actually missed our original flight to Venice at the airport in Manchester and we had to book another second flight getting us in the next morning. Now, we got to the airport three hours early, checked our suitcases in, got through security, we went to the lounge, but neither of us really kept an eye on the gate close enough. And so what happened is we ended up going to the gate and arriving at the gate after the gate closure time, but before the flight departure time. I think we we're about five minutes after gate closure, but the flight still wasn't leaving for another 15 minutes. We got told by the member of Ryanair ground crew that we weren't allowed to board, the flight had closed, and we pleaded with him, but he just left the desk. He explained that the bags were going to be found on the flight and taken off, and that we'd be escorted through security to collect our bags. It was really disheartening because we could see the plane there, the connector was still there, we could have walked across. Um, but, you know, we were there after the gate closure time. I've had so many flights in the past where I've arrived at the gate closure time and the flight hasn't even landed for us to check, for us to board. So in my experience of flying always, it's never been, the gate closure time has ever been accurate. But I think I've learned now that actually that's, <laughs> that is a dangerous way to show up to flights. Anyway, it took them around 45 minutes to find our bags and take them off the flight, which then meant it actually made the flight an hour late for everybody on board. And also, they couldn't find Ed's bag, so I got my suitcase back, but they ended up bringing somebody else's suitcase off, so that also meant another passenger then ended up without their suitcase in Italy. Which all seems a bit silly when they could have just reopened the gate and let us in, in my opinion, but I get it, we were late. It was very strange being escorted through Border Force and then getting to the baggage area. We have to say a massive thank you to Pedro because we called the American Express concierge, explained the situation and they managed to get us booked on another flight for a couple of hours later from Manchester to Paris where we stayed at the Moxie Hotel overnight and then we got a flight from Charles de Gaulle the next morning into Venice. Because it was half term, it meant that there was basically no availability on flights because everything had been booked up. So we were really grateful for the help from Pedro. 
Now, we tried to claim our insurance, but what we found is that actually on travel insurance, you can get disruption cover, but it only covers you if it disrupts you getting into the airport. For example, if there's like a car accident or uh, something that can't be foreseen that stops you arriving at the airport on time to get there. So it was an expensive lesson. Um, and now when I see a boarding card with a gate closing time, I'm going to respect that. But I'd be interested to know if anyone else has had this experience before as well. Let me know in the comments below. So thanks for watching. If you found this useful, then please hit the subscribe button for more travel inspiration, tips and advice. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye.